The weekend is here right now, and of course, so many things going on over the weekend. My name is Ramsey, and of course, this is uh, the weekend edition of Spot Rush. It is a beautiful day. Let me say the good Friday edition of Spot Rush. All right, let me quickly take you all the way to England right now and talk briefly about Manchester City. And of course, Asna, this Sunday is going to be another time again. Should I call this on a rivalry from England? Yes, of course. Uh, a Sunday, it's going to be so tough. But then, is it going to be an equal game between Manchester City and Asna? That is it for me. As a matter of fact, uh, the curtain comes down on Uruguayan Club uh, versus Pep Guardiola. The spotlight turns to the next uh, great Premier League manager rivalry. I call it a rivalry. You know why? <laughs> well, it's going to be hot right there from England. Uh, what we find is something very, very, very different uh, uh, to the club uh, Gagiola era. A new twist on the old team uh, of uh, managing and of course... Uh, they, they need to learn so much and they need to adapt to one or more other things. Uh, men, this is the first time uh, that the Premier League has uh, uh, perhaps a master and apprentice story. You know what I'm talking about? A master and apprentice. Who is the master and who is the apprentice? Go check the story out and you will know what I'm talking about. All right, uh, today's sport is going to be uh, so flexible because, you know, it's weekend. And Man City just uh, appoint uh, Asna, mm, a point behind Asna, meaning on the table, I'm talking about the log now, they are just a point behind Asna. So anything happening now is going to be an overtaking. And of course, the I know the Greek syndrome is also running in the veins uh, of uh, the European people taking you all the way to England. But then, uh, don't, that does not necessarily mean uh, the win in the game is going to be something else. But then, uh, uh, a quite a match. But then, let's see how it's actually going to play out. But now, let me just let you know that Guardiola knows that Ateta is uh, a world rival. He can't take a risk. Uh, he can't take anything for granted for the first time. Uh, the Enter the match as equals. Uh, what factor can stop Asna from lifting the Premier League? That's the question. I'm throwing the question back to you, all fans of Asna, all fans uh, of Manchester City. What do you think is going to stop Asna? Asna have been on top of their game all through the season. But then, let me just tell you something. Asna is going to face a prospect of being forced to play 10 games in the space of a month after the Premier League confirmed major changes to the Gunners. Shadow Mikel Ateta's side went into the international break in a high spirit, having risen to the top of the table on the back of eight straight victories. Mm, my God, my God, my God. A run which culminates in a dramatic late win over Brentford a fortnight ago. And of course, a Downton champion. A uh, league uh, doubleheader against uh, Bayern Munich. Uh, meanwhile, that was uh, the reward for Austin Porto in a dramatic penalty shootout. Uh, do Asna now? Let, let me ask you another question. It's all about Asna. I'm talking so much about Asna today because of their antecedents uh, in the league so far. Let me ask you this final question before I move out of anything that has to do with Asna for now. Do Asna have the advantage? In this title race, I'm asking you. So you can just get to the comment section and drop your response. I'm going to respond to that. Let me move from this story and bring you some other story from the water sport this morning. I want to talk about Romelu Lukaku a little bit, man. That guy, that guy, that guy. Some persons call him <laughs> the last man standing. You just got to know why they call him the last man standing. From the water sport this morning, Romelu Lukaku's outrageous assist against England on Tuesday has seen Chelsea's fan a call for the Benjamin to be given another chance uh, at the Stamford Bridge. You know, the 30-year-old have not gotten enough time in Stamford Bridge. Chelsea have not given him enough time. I don't know why. Those days, ah, if Romelu Lukaku is on the field, ah, you know, you know, you know. I could remember there was a time when I was actually monitoring uh, uh, a World Cup and the moment people see Romelu Lukaku playing, ah, a lot of people trip for him, including 
the other gender. But then, the 30 year old striker is uh, the forgotten man at Chelsea, where he has been uh, already uh, shipped out on loan to Italy, but uh, uh, reminded, uh, reminded fans of his star quality against England during, uh, of course, the international break at Wembley. He, he actually made it happen, not really uh, during the international break, but during the international break, he also uh, did very well for his side. But now I'm talking about Wembley. Lukaku is currently enjoying a season long loan at Roma, scoring 18 goals in 37 appearances across all competitions. And he's expected to seal a permanent move uh, to the club in the summer. However, uh, some Chelsea fans uh, feel the center uh, forward uh, has been given a fair chance uh, at Stanford Bridge uh, since uh, rejoining in uh, a 94. 7.5 million pounds deal from Inter Milan. That was three years ago. So I want to ask you another question again. This weekend is coming with a whole lot of questions. So I want you to react to that in the comment section. Should Romelu Lukaku be given another chance at Chelsea? It's been a while. He's on loan right now, but his performance is uh, uh, bringing out some sign. So should he be given another chance in Chelsea? Do Chelsea really need him right now in that wing as a striker? All right, let's go on a quick break. After this break, I'll return back and it's going to be more coming from England and, of course, from Africa. So don't go nowhere. Ramsey will return back with more story. Follow us on our social media handles at Ubeleke TV. Visit our website at www.ubeleke.tv for a thrilling journey. Ubeleke TV, rising star at the fairground. Alright, it's good to have you back. It's good to have you. It's good to have you. I'm glad to be back again. Well, so many things happened while I was in the dressing room and someone said, hey, come on, you've not talked about Manchester United. And I said, on return from this break, I'm going to start with Manchester United. Come, what, what about Manchester United? Say, wait, I want to talk about these guys. Oh, my you fans, Najoko. All right, let's get to business right now. Manchester United striker. I want to talk about uh, Rasmus. Uh, of course, uh, has um, already he has expressed uh, his desire to see compatriot uh, Christian Eriksen receive more playing time after the midfielder revealed his uh, unhappiness uh, with his current role at Old Trafford under manager Eriksen Hag. According to the information, Eriksen has only started in nine of uh, Man United's uh, Premier League games at uh, this season and he has been uh, a reduction in his influence under Ten Hag. Well, a lot of people are complaining about Ten Hag, but then uh, some persons are actually satisfied with him. Uh, and the player already shared that he too has sat on the bench uh, uh, for Copenhagen and therefore understands Ericsson's situation. Is there a space for Ericsson in United's a midfielder? That's the question right now. Even if he comes up, is there a space for him looking at the people in the midfield? right now. Don't you think uh, even uh, if they put him there, he may not fit into the shoe, but then some persons are clamoring and including himself, he said give me a try and see what I will do. If I don't perform well, you can do whatever you want to do. Well, if I am um, Hag, I will actually give him a try. Alright, let's move away from there and get to another story. And now we are coming back to Nigeria. We are coming back to the home front and bring to you what is happening from the home front of Gaza. It wasn't a very good one. I, I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to talk about it. I mean, the Ghana and Mali friendly. How did it really happen? I was discussing with Philip right here and I said, well, that's more like a little more uh, test uh, for the coach because um, whatever comes out of that game will be a decider whether or not he's going to be the next coach of the Super Eagle. If you remember, just get back uh, to the YouTube channel and um, listen to the conversation between myself and, of course, uh, uh, Philip, sir, uh, when we talked about uh, that game. But then the Super Eagles 2 0 defeat to Mali in the international friendly match on Tuesday night uh, has sealed the fate of uh, interim manager Finidi Judge. Uh, and uh, Enyimba technical advisor no longer stands a chance to nail down the job permanently. Remember, he's part of those contesting for the position of uh, the coach of the Super Eagles after the departure of Pesero. Pesero is gone. He is not just the only one. About 50 coaches. Oh, why they not go? Ah, 50 coaches. Why? Why? 50. 50 coaches want to coach the Super Eagles. 
Money. There is money there. There's money there. When you see 50 coaches, both local and foreign coaches, struggling to coach the Super Eagles, you know that. There is money there. All right. As a matter of fact, for Finidi George, I think the game is over. The game is over. The game is over. Already, according to the information hitting MC Ramsey and Oweleke TV, uh, it's been said that uh, the Eagle posted uh, a shabby show in Marrakesh as the team uh, got no single shot on target in their 2 0 defeat uh, to the Malians. Uh, no single goal on target. Waiting happen. Waiting on a goal do. Una be spectators. I be una be players. Man, this is not a good one at all for Finidi. That was Nigeria's first loss to the original arrivals in more than four decades. Four decades. You know what a decade means. So, as it is right now, Finidi George is one of the coaches, like I said earlier, who is applying to replace the East Wild manager, Joseph Pesero, and the former Ajax Amsterdam winger has handed an opportunity to showcase his coaching prowess by managing the team for the two friendly matches despite initial pressure from fans and observers following the win against Ghana. The slip up against Mali has persuaded the Nigerian football Federation NFF to adhere to their original plan of appointing a foreign coach. My God, my God, my God. Only if we need the judge, don't spoil show for all the Nigerian players. I see nothing make Nigerian Super Eagles win Mali. Mali, two decades. I mean, how many decades? Ah! They never win us, but then Finidi Judge fall hand, and that's a slap, man. Well, I, I, I'm just saying this, but then as a matter of fact, NFF have now decided, and they have said, well, we are going back to our initial plan. Of course, we don't want uh, a, a home based coach. We want to go for a foreign coach, but then the foreign coach gone should be their money too much. You know what I'm talking about. But then Finidi Judge, they are using that one as excuse right now. But uh, I don't know. But that's the excuse they have right now that Finidi Judge has been given the chance, but he never proved himself and they are now reverting to their initial plan of getting a foreign coach even though we have uh, over uh, 50 coaches uh, vying for that position all right moving away from that story let me talk about former super eagles captain and coach uh, sunday olise he has denied applying for the vacant uh, uh, coaching position in the national team and fought the application process for the job uh, according to what he said uh, it's been learned that over 50 coaches like i said have uh, reportedly shortlisted for the vacant Eagles job, uh, according to NFF. Uh, let's see who is going to get it, but Olise said, well, every other person is applying, but then, mm -mm, mm -mm, no, 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 not me. I won't apply, because the application process is tilting towards something, and you know who I am. Mm. You know, I apply. But okay, even, maybe, if, for even apply, say, this thing where if you need to do, for no pay you, because foreign coach, is now what they are going for. And you know how it happens. Most time, often time, uh, record has shown that um, the NFF always go for foreign uh, coaches. Even Pesero. What is Pesero's track record? You want Pesero to perform, even though he was able to get to the final of the African Cup of Nations. If you look at his antecedent before he became the coach of the Super Eagles, how many clubs has he ever coached and won trophies? These are the things we should be looking at. But then, NFF say we want to go for a foreign coach. Well, we wish them all the best. Moving away from there, let me bring you to speed with the fixtures, the matches that will be going down over the weekend. But then, I just want to do England for now. All right, Newcastle, Newcastle versus um, uh, West Ham United is going to be 3 p.m. Then, uh, Bournemouth versus Everton, 4 p.m. Chelsea will be taking on Burnley, and it's going to be 4 p.m. Tottenham versus Luton, still 4 p.m. Aston Villa versus Wolves. Uh, that's going to be 6 p.m. That game is a tough game. Then, on Sunday, we we have Man City and, of course, Arsenal. That's one game that a lot of people will be watching out for. Who is going to get to the top of the log after that match on Sunday? Will Arsenal maintain their position at the log? Because just a point, uh, I drift uh, Manchester City or Manchester City will defeat them and get to the top of uh, the log. This is going to be the size, of course, of uh, the Sport Roger Weekend Edition today. I am yours faithfully, MC Ramsey, the man with Jesse number 10 at the middle of the game. Catch you. I'll bring you more stories more story monday i will tell you if asna is going to be at the top or they are going to descend on the log bye, -bye for now and have a wonderful good friday and happy easter in advance